I mean, just basically the boot, boot rooms, basically identical. All the A rooms, the B rooms, as far as equipment wise, our brooders, our fans, everything's ran off of this. We'll put in our settings. Um, so every day when we go to, to make changes, it's all set here. Um, our jet tube that brings in the cool air and stirs it. We control it here with the intensity. We've got five minute timers for our 12 and our 18 inch fans. So if we wanna run it more than what we've got it programmed for, we can do this. And then all of our rooms got a farm alarm system and basically monitors your heat, um, your water, and then power. So if there's an issue, you know, we'll program seven phone numbers in It'll just start going down the line until someone answers and acknowledges it. But then all of our rooms also uh, got access to where we can uh, run any kind of antibiotic, um, vitamin, acid salt, whatever we want to do through the lines uh, to the chicks. On this back wall, we've got paragons that control our light settings in our feed so we'll go in and we'll program what time we want the lights to come on what time we want them to go off um, there's 16 stages that so you'll just program everything same thing with the feed uh, normally on the feed i'll run uh, about three to four minutes every five hours of the feed system kick on and then just like the the lights i mean the feed we've got the option to override everything if you come in whether it be at night check or whatnot and you see that they're running low you can just flip the switches and override everything, let it run, shut it down, and it'll go back to its normal routine. And I guess I can go over this. But every barn, we just keep track of how many chicks we placed and when we actually placed them. So we placed them yesterday morning, we put 8208 in here. And each day, whoever goes through, does chores, they just write down how many deads. We keep running track here. I keep a spreadsheet in my office so I know continually what our mortality is. Um, and then we just keep a notebook if there's any, uh, what they actually did. So if I came around, Chris or someone, and they just kind of wanted to get an oversight without having to really look at the sheet, they can kind of see what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. It makes it a little bit easier and quicker uh, for us. So this sheet, I'll actually just follow these birds until they get caught and moved out to the flight pens. The beach ring has about 1640. Uh, in it, we're gonna try uh, at five days, we'll pull the ring, we'll lower the feed system. Uh, three days, I'll drop half the plasons down. Fourth day, I'll drop the remaining. Um, probably with this amount of birds, I'll probably leave the nipple or the minis in until day seven. But the first seven days, this is basically how the lighting is. It stays on 24 seven. Um, day five, I'll start cutting the brooder light down to 50% then down to 25, so by day seven, it's shut off. By that time, the birds know where the water, the feed, and the heat source is uh, that way. And then I'll actually start dimming the lights down that way. Um, we actually went to the minis. Uh, we were having issues actually on the B side for the first week. Uh, not all the birds were getting transitioned over to the plasons. Um, so I'd probably have, oh, you know, 20 a day probably for three, four days and then it'll just go down to zero. So we want to try in a few barns, um, not using the nipples, do the uh, minis and actually get more aggressive with dropping the plasons. We added more plasons in all of our A side because um, once you go over to the B room, strictly just plasons out in the flight pens, just plasons. So the quicker we can get them to that is our goal. But we run one feed flat per every 100 chicks. Day seven, I'll start pulling them out. I'll go a third. Day eight, I'll take a third. Day nine, I'll finish pulling them out. By that time, they found the feed uh, feed system. But they'll stay in here 18, 21 days. Um, by that time, basically the brooders aren't even running. It's on pilot. Um, so it's roughly about 77 degrees on this side. We'll open the door at the end of the day the lights will pretty much go down the darkness. I might turn the brooder lights on just a little so they don't pile. Uh, over on the B side, they'll be full intensity and just throughout the night, they'll transition themselves over to the B side. Come morning time, we'll just bring our crew in and we'll drive them over to the other side. 
we'll break everything down, clean it out, pressure wash it, fumigate, and we'll set up for the next batch. And that'll just happen. We'll do about six turns in this barn, and then uh, we'll do winter whites, and then normally come winter time, we actually run uh, our partridge in the barn. You guys wanna fight the heat anymore, or you wanna head over to the B side, it's a lot cooler. Over there, we're about 4.3 chicks per square foot. Here, we're about 1.6. Yeah, typically three weeks of age. We'll move them over here. Normally, if I'm 77 degrees on that side, I'll normally bump it up to about 80 degrees on this side for the first couple days. Then I'll start going a degree a day. Um, by the time I get to five weeks after we peep them, I'll start going two to three degrees a day when you can really start dropping the temps. So by the time we go to move them out at six, seven weeks of age, you know we've got it set to where the fans are running all the time at 50 degrees. Those will those will get moved over here. They'll stay until six to seven weeks. They'll get moved out. By that time, those are three weeks of age. They'll come in here. So then the next group will go.